Hi guys, welcome to Quilting Window. I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts and I'm looking forward to make some trees with you, some pines. This is super fun block, I really like it. It's simple to do it and you can use this block in a table runner or you can use it in a quilt, just like the quilt behind me, between houses. It's fun and I look forward to make it with you. So let's look at what's in our quilting basket today. We have fun fabrics and I have prepared a kit for a whole table runner. Sometimes a making a table runner will allow you to learn a new technique and do a fun project and just learn how to do it and uh, don't take on too much. So I love making table runners. Many times I release patterns called trio. Trio have three projects, small projects in it, and the pattern that we're gonna work on it today is from the Sleigh Bell Trio, and it's one of the table runners, the pine. I also want to show you something I have in my quilting basket to make our life easier. I selected some snowflakes and those are laser cut snowflakes. The fusible webbing is already on it. I absolutely love them and my kids love them. Sometimes they peel the paper away and stick them directly onto the windows. I myself peel the paper away and secure it in place on my table runners or other project and use it as my applique piece. Since we're going to do some applique and some piecing, I recommend select the winter essentials for those colors. Those are blue and white colors. And I have a fun blue that we can use it over the snowflakes. And then we have other colors that we can use for piecing as well as quilting. So this is gonna give you everything that you need. Don't forget our Macrotex needle. It's gonna work for this project. All right, let's get going. So in our kit, in our fabrics, what I have, I want to just go over. You're going to find a binding. You're going to find a little small border. You're also going to find a background piece. And you're going to find a nice stash of fabrics. I'm going to save one of the fabrics. I have a, a, a fat quarter of this. The other fabrics are just fat eight. And I'm going to save my fat quarter for some fun trees. I can't wait to show you those. This five uh, fat eights I'm going to use to cut our tree. All right, let's put the fabrics to the side. And from the fat eights, I cut a rectangles. One, two, three, four, and five. And many times I lay the fabrics out in front of me because I'm going to be sewing them together. And from this fabric, I'm going to cut a tree. So I looked at it, the color to see how it's floating. I like to mix batiks and prints. So in my project, I have three printed fabrics and two batiks. I like some spacing right here. And I would love a love to throw a darker color in between, keep the light right here, and maybe have another one right here. Then I wanna move things around and I play like this. And once I select how I want my fabrics, I can move on and start sewing them together. How I'm gonna sew them together? I'm gonna take two pieces, place them right sides together, match it up beautifully and sew it. I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure that your quarter inch seam allowance is indeed a quarter of an inch, so that way you're not absorbing too much fabric and then later on, after you finish sewing all of the pieces, I have done that for us right here. Notice the all sewn together. I push my seam allowance in one direction, pressed it beautifully. I have our scrappy panel ready, set, go. So now I just gonna have my template. I'm gonna place it right in the middle of my scrappy panel. And look at this, I can match one of the um, edges, like the bottom edge right here. And I noticed something when I make my template and it's a paper template, when I go ahead and take my ruler and wanna place it on it and cut it, sometimes things are sliding and we can't have that. So what I like to do is I take a double sticky tape, this is double sticky tape, and I put it on the back of my template, anywhere, someplace in the middle, just put it on the back of your template match it up this one side, the bottom, just like this. And now 
when I have this, look, nothing is moving. When I'm moving it, I'm moving everything. So now I can put my ruler over. Oh, this is going to be a great little cute little pine tree. Trim it. Make sure you trim it all the way before you move it. Then turn everything around. Look, my template is staying in place. Trim it. Isn't it fun? Oh, guys, this is the easiest way to have your template. Just stay where you want it. And I'm going to trim just the tip. And look at this. I can now just gently go ahead, peel it away, and I can use it all over again on another fabric. So do it that for yourself. This is fun. And this is how I'm going to cut my trees. For the whole table runner, I need more than a one. But for today, we're going to focus on just making one. And then uh, in a pattern, it gives you direction. There is six trees total. Three of them are made from the strips. Three of them are just a solid tree. Let me show you the solid one, just like that. Remember when I told you out of the fabric, I selected one, the big print one. That's what I saved this fabric for, for my uh, solid trees uh, that are not strip piece. I want to take advantage of this beautiful print from Blueburn collection that I designed that I think you would enjoy it. So that's what you're going to cut for some of the trees. But this is just the a tree, uh, part of the tree. We also need for one block, we need the bottom right here, two rectangles on each side, and then we're gonna need our background pieces background pieces and notice it I have two background pieces left and a right so let me take you through how I cut the left and a right image of my tree all right let's put this away for a second I take a piece of fabric a strip I fold it in half right sides together or wrong sides together it does not matter just so it's opposite sides just fold it together and I put wrong sides together. I love the nice color on the outside. Then I'm gonna take a template and this template again comes in a pattern and I'm gonna cut it out out of the pattern. It's a paper template. Now I'm gonna place the template on my fabric and start matching up the edges so I can cut. So when I put my ruler over it, just like this, and make sure you match the edge of your ruler with the edge of your template so you're not trimming your template. You are just cutting the fabric and I'm gonna make a cut. Look at this. In just a one cut, I can peel the template away, reposition my template right here. See, oh, this is fun. Again, place my ruler over. The template is not moving anywhere because I have that little double sticky tape and I can make another cut. In the one cut, you make a left and a right image of your background. Isn't that great? So you need to repeat this six times because we have six trees in our table runner. I have some already pre-cut for you, so I'm gonna put this to the side. Let's start piecing things together. So now, for a start, I'm going to sew left and a right rectangle to the square, and that's going to be my tree trunk. So that's my tree trunk. The seam allowances are going to go towards the dark, towards my tree trunk. That's the bottom. Now, the top is a little bit trickier, but nothing that you cannot do it. I'm believing in you. So grab your scissors, grab your rotary, start cutting fabrics and start making things and don't worry about anything. So what I like to do is I take one of the sides, I place it right over, and this is important how you match things up. All right, so place it right over, right here, uh, and on the templates also, it gives you a line. See this point right here? You can mark this on this if you want to, and then you on this template right here, notice it, this point you can mark it. So later on, when you start sewing, you could put a pin through this and to this, 
right here and sew it. I just eyeball it. So what I do is I match it up here, match it up here and a little bit is gonna stick it out and I'm gonna sew straight down, flip it open, press the seam allowance towards the tree because the tree is dark so we want the uh, seam allowances going towards it. Then I'm gonna place the next one just like that. Notice it, little bit is gonna stick out, little bunny ear right here. Start sewing from the top, straight down, flip it open, and you have both sides sewn. Now let me show you the one that I have prepared for you. It's right here. Notice it, seam allowances, upward push towards. Do you see how I sew this right here? Right here, seam allowances, push towards the center and the next thing I'm gonna add this cute little bottom and I have my tree made. All right, if you wanted to, you can make as many as you would like to. I like to play around and try all different trees and this is the solid one. Remember we talked about it? Again, I have my sides, I have my bottom tree trunk right here. Look it all up. So left, right, push to the center, left, right, push to the center. And when you sew the bottom to the top, you push it towards the tree. So that way later on, when you have to quilt, you will quilt in a ditch around it and your tree will pop even more to the front and you're gonna have a beautiful low tree. So now we just finished our pine trees. Let's see what's happened next. Once we have two trees, let's move some of those templates. Two trees, we're gonna match them up just like that and we're gonna place it right sides together, right here, and we're gonna sew it down right here. Make sure you match this seam right here and then sew those together. I have a little bar that I'm gonna add it to the top when the tree are sewn and two of the trees make one block. The alternating block in our project, I have a little surprise for you, is our snowflake. So what I like to do is I cut my background and this background is uh, perfect to take our little snowflakes out of the package. Laser cut pieces are made, cut with a laser, and the edges on the laser cut pieces are really nice. They're not going to fray unless you wash it more than five times. Then they're gonna start fraying. So you can leave them raw, and I love to open a fresh package. And in the package, you have six snowflakes three small, three big, and you can use whichever ones you want to. And oh, just guys, look at the colors on the snowflake. Isn't it beautiful? And can you imagine have to cut this by hand? I am so thankful for the laser cut pieces. And all that I'm gonna do is gently crease it. Did you see how I crease one of the arms of my snowflake? And I'm gonna peel the paper away. Watch this, peel the paper away. It has a little bit of a sticky on it. It has a steam seam too on. And now I can place it anywhere on my background, anyhow I want it. Make sure you stay quarter inch away from the edges because you're gonna need those for our seams. And look at, I just placed them right here, just like this. I'm gonna grab my uh, iron, plus press it in place very gently. Less is better. You just securing your pieces in place so you can applique. And for this snowflake, I like to take the dark blue thread from Aurofil and just stitch through the middles of all of the appliques right here. Just through the middle, just stitch right through the middle all the way. And once it's stitched down, then I can go ahead and enjoy this in my project. They're large and they're small snowflakes. And like I said, you can use as many as you want to. It's your quilt. It's your table runner. So you can add it to any of the projects. Now notice this beautiful project. I have six trees. Three of them are solid trees. And then I add my snowflakes right here. And in this case, 
I have first piece everything together and quilted it and actually add the snowflakes after I already quilted my project and you can do that as well so that way when you're stitching through your snowflakes that stitching is a quilting and applying in one so this one is a fun little quilt now if you can make a one you can make a dozen you can use it in a quilt or you can use it in a table runner no matter what i have faith that you would enjoy it and have fun with it thank you for visiting today Make sure you remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, visit us on Instagram and Facebook, as well our website at www.laundrybasketquilts.com. Happy quilting!